tonight. Hope you had a good afternoon. How many of you got some rest this afternoon? Let me see your hand. All right. Well, pray. I, I, I actually got a nap this afternoon and I told my wife when I woke up, I said, now I needed more than that, but I'm glad I got what I did. Amen. And so uh, praise the Lord for that. Maybe that was you too. Uh, and uh, you get another run at it here in just a little bit. You can try again. Amen. And try to get a little bit more rest uh, tonight. It's good to be back this evening. The Lord gave us a good service this morning. I praise the Lord for that. Had a great crowd and good time together honoring those who have served our country and who continue to serve our country. Thank the Lord for that. With, with everything that was happening this morning, that baptism, all that was happening, I forgot to mention uh, and let folks know that the Owalabi family was going to be with us tonight and uh, we are excited to have them back at SBT. Many of you remember them being with us in our missions conference back in 2015 uh, and uh, they have since uh, been to Nigeria and back and they are here to report on what the Lord is doing and the work there and then he's going to preach for us tonight and so I'm looking forward to that. Now some of you may, may remember Brother Solomon Owalabi who was here uh, since then. He came in between, uh, and so I don't want to confuse you between the two, uh, but uh, Brother Ezra is his son, and it's great to have them with us tonight, and uh, when uh, we, I was looking at their children earlier, and their uh, their little girl was much, much more their little girl back then than she is now. Uh, she was still in a carrier when they were here a few years ago, uh, and so it's great to have them, and I'm excited to, for you to get to hear uh, what the Lord is doing in their lives and to hear uh, Brother Ezra preach. And so uh, we want to pray and ask the Lord to bless the service tonight, and I'm looking forward to getting him in the pulpit here soon. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to be here tonight. I thank you for the service this morning and uh, the fact that we have so many uh, wonderful uh, people here in our church that we were able to honor uh, who have served our country and who continue to serve our country. Uh, we thank you and continue to pray your great blessing upon them. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'll bless our time together here tonight. We need to hear from heaven. You've been stirring and moving and working among your people of late, and we need you to continue to do that tonight in a very special way. I pray that the word of God would go forth in power this evening. I pray you'll bless Brother Ezra as he preaches tonight and help us to, uh, help us to give special and good attention to the word of God. And we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to have the choir sing.
comforting thought, thought tonight, that either way the Lord leads us, we get, we're satisfied because we're in his will. Let's take our hymn books and turn over to hymn number 60, The Cro Way of the Cross Leads Home. Let's all stand together. Hymn number 60, The Way of the Cross Leads Home. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall never lose sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The to you very quickly. First of all, I just wanted to give you a quick ministry report. Uh, we didn't have any nursing home services this week, uh, but it was a busy week at, uh, in ministries nonetheless. In uh, the jail service on Friday night, had 13 in the service this week, and Anthony and Tyrone both trusted Christ as Savior. Praise the Lord for that. So be praying for Anthony and Tyrone as they start a new life in Christ. Praise the Lord for a great night uh, at the jail ministry on Friday night. And then uh, the Lord continued to bless the next morning on Saturday. Uh, we were a little surprised by this. I didn't expect that big a crowd this week, Brother Brandon. We had 85 kids on the buses on Saturday and had two boys, brothers, Quentin, 11, and Janari uh, 8 that trusted Christ as Savior on Saturday. And so praise the Lord for that. Great to see the Lord blessing uh, the bus ministry there as well. Bus workers, remember, we do have bus ministry again this Saturday, uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, I did not mention this morning that Low Country Fellowship is tomorrow at Forest Hills Baptist Church in Hartsville, South Carolina. Uh, the van will be leaving here at 2 o'clock to head there. If you'd like to go with us, Brother Brandon and I will be going. If you'd like to come with us, please let us know that you are planning on coming. So we'll know if we do need to take the van or if just a personal vehicle will do. Uh, if you haven't let, it, let us know that you're planning on riding the van, please let one of us know uh, before you leave tonight. Uh, also, men, remember our prayer breakfast coming up on Saturday uh, at 8.15. Uh, we want to be faithful to come and pray uh, and seek the Lord's hand of blessing uh, on the church here. And uh, many people that are uh, struggling within our church family, also for our missionaries and our outreach around the world, uh, just uh, we want to come and pray and seek God's face uh, on Saturday together. We'll, uh, we'll have a good breakfast there, and then we'll take some time to pray uh, before the buses roll later that morning. Morning. Uh, and of course, remember our, our Thanksgiving schedule. I mentioned it this morning. I won't belabor it again tonight, but pay attention to those dates in your bulletin, and we'll look forward to a good time together praising the Lord uh, during the Thanksgiving holiday. So keep all of that in mind. All right, number 317, Savior, like a shepherd lead us. We'll sing it out tonight. Uh, grab your home, uh, songbook, turn to number 317. 
All right, let's go ahead and stand together. Hymn number 317. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us. For our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought each other this evening and we'll come back and sing another verse of it. We're on hymn number 317 on that fourth. Early let us seek thy favor. Early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. All right, we'll get ready to receive the offering tonight. Our ushers will come. the uncomfortable movement of silence as you wait for the missionaries to make their way from the back to the front. I wouldn't do this on Sunday morning. We have to act like somebody on Sunday morning, right, for guests here and everything like that. But we have a little fun on Sunday nights. That's right, that's right, a little bit more fun this way. All righty, well, we'll pray and ask for the Lord's blessing tonight. Isn't our God good? He's blessed us so much. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, but, Doug, won't you lead us in prayer, sir?
We've got a mighty fortress, amen? He is our shield, our buckler, our strong and mighty tower. Thank the Lord for that. Appreciate that, Brother Chris. Well, it's a blessing to have the Olabi family back with me. I really, I really love these folks and thank the Lord for the work that he's doing in their life. I have a dual connection with them. Uh, I pastor a church that supports them, and uh, we, uh, we uh, were able to start supporting them before they went to the field uh, the first time there. And then, uh, and then uh, I also have another connection with him because I'm on the advisory council of Beacon International Baptist Missions, which is uh, the agency that partners together with him uh, going uh, Going out, uh, uh, going back over to Nigeria, and so we thank the Lord uh, for the opportunity to have a part. Uh, the last time I saw him actually was at my pastor's funeral over in Tennessee. Uh, he was there, but the Mullendore was the director of the mission, and uh, so got a special place uh, in my heart for these folks. And I sort of, you know, we we love all of our missionaries, and we pray for all of them. But every now and then, there's a missionary family that comes through that, for some reason that you can't really put your finger on, you just sort of have a little special connection as a church family with them and I always felt that way with the Olabis and thank the Lord for the the work he's doing in their lives but brother there have been, there are a lot of new faces here since you were here last time for sure how many of you have not met this couple before tonight let me see your hand 
Wow, that's amazing. I knew it would be a lot, but that's a whole lot of folks. Uh, and so uh, these are not, everybody, this is not all folks that already know, brother, so we're going to need the full rundown, amen. But he's going to come and, and give us uh, an update for what the Lord is doing through their ministry uh, in Nigeria, and then he is going to preach the Word of God to us tonight. And uh, this will be the first time I've heard him preach, so I'm looking forward to that, excited about it. So brother, come, welcome back to SBT, and uh, it's good to have your sweet wife with us and your kids. They've just grown up on, one of them wasn't with you when you were here last time, uh, and uh, their little girl was in a little baby carrier when they, she was here last time, and so it's a blessing to see their family grow. Come ahead, brother, and we're looking forward to hearing the Lord speak through you tonight. God bless you. We're so glad to be back here. Uh, this church also holds a very special place in our hearts. This is one of the first churches that we came to when we were trying to raise our support to get back to Nigeria. And uh, it was such a great encouragement to us. Uh, I need some pointers from your pastor because uh, I have a new respect for pastors here. Because uh, um, we started our own church in Nigeria. And right now, after about a year and a half, we're averaging about 60 people. And uh, I see how many hands went up when he said people were in here four years ago. Wow, this is a growing church. And uh, we thank God for that. Glory to God for that. Uh, things are happening. And we're, we're, we're so grateful to God for that. Uh, my wife is here, Ayobami Owolabi. Uh, we have two children. My daughter is four years old. Her name is Christina. And uh, I have another son. His name is Solomon. And, uh, and uh, we just want to uh, start by singing a song about heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 Heaven. Mula la ilun la ka to ga jo ke oru ni ba ti so ro ba Mu ye mi kin fo ni ba ti je su lo tan on ayoni o je ko ni je alama ma de le in be in mo la la ilu ka Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, mo la la iluka Jerusalem, ile mi loke oru. I've been dreaming of a city far beyond the sky, where the suffering's over. Get my wings and fly. When Jesus says it's over, oh, what joy that will be. When it's no more dreaming, I'll be home at last. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem. My home right up in the sky. Sometimes I lose direction. Satan clouds my mind. But Jesus stands to remind me that I'm passing through. Instead of losing ever, I must look to the day. When it's no more dreaming, I'll be home at last. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm so grateful for my wife, very supportive. We can't do it without her, and let her know she did a good job singing. <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you so much for the privilege of being here today uh, to hear from your word. We want to thank you for this great church. We want to thank you 
for this country. Father, we want to thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and your love for us that brings us together. Father, we want to pray that if there be anyone here today who does not know you as your personal Lord and Savior, that you work through your word in their hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we live in a, in a place in Nigeria that's kind of hard to explain. Uh, it has a lot of people, a lot of people, but uh, it doesn't have a lot of development. You, you can't really call it a village. You can't call it a town. You can't call it a city. It, but it's, 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 a, it's a big, it's a place with a lot of, more than a million people live there. And it's called Ubumosho. When we are, when we are getting ready to, when we are getting ready to come to America, do you have that up here? When we were getting ready to come to America, it's a five-hour trip from where we live to the biggest city in Nigeria. So we made the trip over there. And uh, this is the big city. No, uh, you go back one. If you go back one. Yeah. That is, that is Nigeria, West Africa. Nigeria is a very complex country. The biggest city in Nigeria has more than 15 million people in one city. Uh, ranked as a country, it's the seventh largest economy in Africa. Okay? The town that we live in, you'll see more of it later, uh, doesn't look like this. But when we go there, we see a lot of different people. You know, Just like when you go to Atlanta or you go to New York, you see everybody. The same thing in Nigeria. So when we were getting ready to come to America, we went a little early, stayed at a hotel for one night. And while we were in the, in the hotel, uh, I, was, I got on the elevator to get up to the third floor where our room was, and I could see a man walk in. And usually when I see somebody that is white, white American, they're usually from Europe. Usually for, but something about this guy, I knew he was an American. I just knew it. Something about the way he dressed and the way he carried himself, I knew he was an American. And also, not only was he an American, I knew he was from the South. <laughs> but I was dressed kind of like this, so there was nothing to give me away that I would know all this stuff by looking at him. It was just me and him. So I figured I'm going to try to mess with him. <laughs> I was pretty sure he was from the South. So I said, roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, how do you know I'm from Alabama? <laughs> you know, I went to high school in Alabama for four years. I went to high school in Alabama. I graduated high school in Alabama. So why do I say that? We ended up talking for another 10 minutes. Just the fact that I knew where he was from made us connect. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. How much more will heaven be? Amen. The only reason we are here right now, standing in front of you, is because of the Christ in you, the Christ in me. Amen? Amen. That's what brings us together. You know, I was, um, when I was in college in Indiana, I worked at a, a hotel, at a front desk for four years. And the hotel was called uh, Spring Hill Suites by Marriott. And I would see people coming in and out, and I was, man, these people, they, their, their jobs will pay for their hotel rooms. And uh, I was like, that's, that's so cool, that's so cool. I want to say, God is good. Amen. God is good to me, and he's good to you, whether you know it or not. Amen. You know what? The pastor put us in a very nice hotel. You know what the name of that hotel was? Spring Hill Suites. <laughs> By Marriott. Amen? So when you yield to God's direction in your life, even the things that you don't think He's going to make available to you might just be what? Available to you. 
Hey, God has been so good to us in more ways than we can say. Nigeria is a country with more than 200 million people. It's the seventh most populous country in the world. About 55% of them practice the religion of Islam. Our first Sunday in our church, Zion Baptist Temple, was March 11th of 2018. March 11th of 2018. Uh, I started the church with my dad when I first went back to Nigeria in 2017. I worked with my dad in his church, Berean Independent Baptist Church, to try to get things ready and hand it over to a local pastor. Then we left together to the town to about an hour away to another site in, the, in a school where we meet in the classroom. And uh, I'll show you some pictures of that later. Uh, but I just wanted to, show, to start off with this, just to demonstrate some of the complexity of the country of Nigeria. It's a country with a lot of wealth, a lot of money, uh, many people that live like they would in America, but it's also a country with a lot of poverty and a lot of hardship. Next slide. Um, you have met my dad. This was my dad when he was about my age. And, uh, and uh, the reason I have this picture, we went to a wedding in Ghana uh, where my dad had started a church. And as we were coming out of the, the wedding, a lady that had a guy in a wheelchair, the guy was blind, and she showed me this picture. It was an elderly man that couldn't see anymore, couldn't walk, and he's the man on this side, on the right-hand side with the Bible. And he said, your dad led my husband to the Lord. Amen. And he started church, he started a church, and he preached for many years. And now he's struggling, I forgot what ailment he was going through, but now he was struggling with, uh, with, with his health, and she just wanted me to know what impact my dad had. And... That made an impression on me. I want to have that kind of what? An impact for Christ. Amen. And uh, just to let you know, long time ago, missionaries from this great country went to Nigeria, led my dad to the Lord, brought him back here to America, and that's why I'm here today. Amen? Amen. Missions matters. Amen. What we're doing matters. We'll talk more about that later. Next slide. <clears throat> this is uh, our, our children's ministry. You can see my wife in the back. And uh, children's ministry is very important. My kids love church in America. Why do they love church? Because of the children's ministry. Uh, so, so it's very important. Some of these kids are from Muslim families, and they come. Their parents let them come, and we share the gospel with them. Amen. And we plant the seeds right there. And some of them even profess faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, and this, was, this is some of our church services. The man in the back is a farmer. He got saved, and he's a regular, uh, gets involved with his wife and kids. Uh, they live of quite a ways away. It takes them 30 minutes to come, but they come faithfully, and we thank God for that. About 20% of the people there that you see in the church, you go to the next slide come all the time, and maybe another 60% are on rotation. They come, they hear what we're saying, and maybe because we don't beat drums like everybody else, uh, they, they stay for maybe two, three months, and then they go back to their family churches. Because we're in a very religious part of Nigeria, a very religious part of Nigeria. And uh, it takes a lot of courage for them to eventually leave their churches because their churches are more than a church. It's, they have communal ties to their church. They have a, a lot of uh, clubs and a lot of, it's, it's, it's really hard. So pray for us, pray for us. It's, it's, slow, it's slow work. We go to soul winning at least three times a week. And uh, most people think we're a cult because independent Baptists are not common in Nigeria. The way churches are uh, is, is heavily charismatic. So it's just a very foreign concept. So, so pray, pray that God, uh, God touches hearts for us, because only God can do it. We can't do it. We cannot do it. Next. Next slide. There's some more pictures of our church. 
Of course, I took pictures on a very good Sunday. So, <laughs> more pictures. This is on the higher end of the average. This is probably even more than 60. This is more of a typical. Next slide. All right, now you can see I showed you the nice parts. I just said I'd show you some of this too. That's actually a car that, mo that was moving on the road, and I took the picture of that. So, next. That's another car. Next. Next. <laughs> All right, that's, a, that's another picture of our church. That's my mom, you see it in the front. And that's uh, the market in Ogumosho. Next. I'm not going to talk much through the rest of the pictures, but I'm going to talk in a couple of them. That's my wife going shopping. You can see we love peppers. We love hot sauce. We eat a lot of hot sauce. Uh, that's a, that, that was a funeral, and they were getting the cow ready to, to be eaten. So they pump it with a, uh, what you do with a tire pump, and then they shave it. In, 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 in our part of the country. Next. Okay, you can pause right here. Uh, we were on our way to go up and pick up some of our church members in the morning, and I took this picture. You see the police in the front? In, and uh, Nigeria is a very religious country. Like, we were going to go pick them up. And what they're doing is they're simply just taking money. They're simply just taking bribes on the road. And uh, if, if you don't give them, there's, no, there's nothing they cannot do. It's, that's, just, that's just what they do. Uh, but because we are in the ministry, they don't, if we go through and we tell them, you're a pastor, they let us go. They let us go. And, 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 and to me, that's very strange. It's very strange because here they are standing on the road doing something that they know is wrong, and they still have enough respect, or I don't know what even to call it. In, they're, they're, they're still religious enough. A lot of these policemen will still go to churches on Sundays. So we, we usually give them, give them a tract, and they let us go. So I just took a picture uh, just to, just to demonstrate that even in the face of corruption, there's still the, the, some, relig some religiosity on the surface. That just, that just shows how it is. And I will talk more about that when I preach. Next. Next. Okay, this is our church building. Uh, we're working on, on, on building the church. We no longer want to use the classroom, and uh, we've made a lot of progress on that. It's actually gone farther up than this. Uh, my dad has put some of his uh, support into it. I also have, and we've had also some contributions from some of our churches and supporters here in America. And even some of the, our people there in Nigeria have also put some money into it. Uh, things are going slowly but steadily. To be honest, my dad does a lot more in dealing with the contractors because I'm not uh, savvy enough yet <laughs> to deal with them. I mean, uh, because uh, they're not very straightforward. So I, I, you might have some of that here. So if I try to do it, I'll probably do it for maybe 10 times what my dad is doing it for. So I let him do more of that. And uh, so I'm grateful to have him to be working with him, because it saves me a lot of pain and heartache, and I'm grateful for that. Next. <laughs> Next slide. So that's the church. And if you want any information about how you can be a part of that, uh, just, just, just ask me, and uh, I'll be happy to let you know. All right, I, I believe that's it. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about 
catch you up to speed about uh, not only what is going on in Nigeria, but about me and my family personally. Uh, for those that weren't here last time, my name is Ezra Owolabi. I was saved at the age of nine years old. I was saved at the age of nine years old when an evangelist by the name of Charles Hand came from the United States of America. I think he came from Ohio. Uh, before that, I had heard the gospel message preached many times. Uh, but my understanding of the gospel message was that I needed to be perfect in order to get to heaven. That was my understanding of it. Uh, but for some reason, maybe I paid extra attention because it was an evangelist from America, that uh, revival evening, I came to the understanding that my salvation had nothing to do with what I could earn, but what was already sacrificed for me on the cross of Calvary. I realized that if I was going to not go to eternal fire because I was born a sinner, I would have to put my total faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I guess another way I could explain this was, um, this is a great place to talk about this. Uh, this is a great country. Many things were invented in America. Uh, right here in this great country, the automobile Ford was invented. I think the first uh, airplane, the Wright brothers. You, you can count them. So many things were invented here in America. But in 1888, does anybody know the life-changing invention that was invented in 1888? Not the automobile. I don't know when that was invented. I don't know if it was, but that's not what I'm referring to. What? French fries? French fries? <laughs> what did you say? Print and press? I don't know about that, but that's not what I'm talking about. But it's something that, I tell you this, it makes your life a lot more bearable. It's revolutionary. What? Peanut butter? Peanut butter? Not peanut butter. <laughs> Not peanut butter? In 1888, people had a need that they weren't aware they, they, had, they, they had. People were in a situation that they weren't aware that they were in. I mean, it was a dire situation. Everybody was in the same boat. Everybody stunk. And they weren't aware that they totally stunk. <laughs> but in 1888, an unknown inventor in Philadelphia invented deodorant. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Now think about it. What would life be like without deodorant? What will life be like without deodorant? And what does deodorant have to do with hope and faith. What does deodorant have to do with hope and faith? I want you to think about the guy that invented deodorant. Before he invented deodorant, everyone stunk, but nobody knew that they stunk. And he had to tell them that what I invented, I invented it because you all stink. <coughs> and imagine, do I stink? No, I don't. Do you think I stink? No, because everybody's not stunk. How did he do it? That, to me, as a missionary, connects with what we do. Because in a country as religious as Nigeria, when you tell people, that you cannot work your way to heaven. You are attacking their sense of pride. Right? There's a lot of works involved in salvation. They want to be a part of my, their salvation. They want to pray all night. They, they have a lot of night vigils. They, they go up to mountains. We go up to mountains to pray. They, do, they, they fast for weeks and months. They want to be a part of it. They want to work for it. But there's none of that when it comes to God. 
Amen? If you would turn with me to Colossians, the book of Colossians, chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. It says, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, here in America, everyone knows about deodorant. Here in America, everyone knows about deodorant. So everybody wears deodorant, right? And no one says, oh, I'm not going to put on deodorant because I don't stink. Is there anyone, is there, is there anyone that would say that? Now, I heard 5% of people don't have to wear deodorant. I couldn't believe this until I said it in a church, and uh, one of the pastors didn't have to wear deodorant. <laughs> Apparently, there's people like that. I, I couldn't smell him. So it's, it's true. <laughs> Apparently, some people don't need to wear deodorant. Have you heard about that before? Yeah, 5% of people, it says. But no one has that, that pride issue. I'm not going to wear it because I don't think. I'm not going to put anything on my armpits because I'm special. <laughs> and I'm not going to stink. Right? No one's going to take it personally. Right? This, is, this isn't to talk down on, on anybody that doesn't use deodorant, that doesn't know. Right? They just don't know. Hey, if you don't know that you were born stinky, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Right? It's not your fault. If the world does not know that they were born sinners, it's not their fault. Right? They don't know. How will they know without a preacher? Right? That's why we need to go and tell them. Amen. These things have I written unto you that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Amen? Amen? For by grace are ye saved, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I want to ask you today, why don't you stink? Because you put on deodorant. That's easy for you to say. It's not, it's, it's, not, it's not a point of, no one is taking a stand. I'm going to die on this hill. I'm not putting on deodorant because I don't stink. But there's people dying and going to hell because they refuse to put their faith and trust in God. The only thing good about you, the only thing good about me, is Christ in me. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory, right? We have no reason to look down on the people out there in the world, right? Somebody told you, I was blessed enough to be born in a Christian family. We need to choose hope over meaninglessness. Amen? Amen. You know, I, uh, I've heard that knowledge is the information that you have. They say wisdom is knowing what you don't know about what you know. Wisdom is knowing what you don't know about what you know. And they say understanding is what you know but can't explain. Why do I say that? We take it for granted. Until I said deodorant, nobody thought about it. Nobody thinks about deodorant, right? Nobody thinks about it. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 3, it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. Once you are born again, you have walked from darkness into light. You have walked from ignorance into knowledge, right? Right? You have information that you didn't have before. Amen? Amen. People think that if people know that their salvation is secure, 
then they will go back into sin. Not if you were really saved. Why would you want to stink? Let me ask you this. If you go back to a place where nobody knew. Now in Nigeria, some people wear deodorant. Some people wear deodorant. Not everybody knows about it. But some people do. Right? But if you go to a place, if you're around people that don't know, will you stop wearing it? That's a good question, right? Will you stop wearing it? And if you stop wearing it, will you stop smelling yourself? Will you stop smelling the other people? That's what happens when you are a believer and you're not living for Christ. You will not be happy. You will always hear the smell. You will always hear the stink. You will not be happy and you will not be at peace. Amen? Amen. 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 There's no pride involved in this. There's no pride involved in this. In salvation, there is no pride, pride involved. The person that sold deodorant had to tell everybody that they stunk, but also told them that there was hope. That's right. And in order to accept that hope, some humility had to be involved. They needed to humble themselves and accept the fact that they stunk. And then he needed to show them exactly why they stunk. They couldn't put it on their face. It wouldn't work. They couldn't put it on their belly. It wouldn't work. They couldn't put cologne. It's not going to work. You know, one time I went with, with, with one of our, 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 our church members to a, a small supermarket, like a, like a small Dollar Tree. And I walked in. I had my mind I was going to buy some deodorant. And then I saw that he picked up a, a bottle of cologne that was about five times what I was going to pay for my deodorant. And I asked him, do you use this? He said, no. I said, why are you buying that? He said, because this is going to make me smell good. I was like, do you know this is cheaper and it's more important than that? It's true, isn't it? Even if it's odorless, it's more important than that. It doesn't matter what you do from the, on the outside. You show up to church, come up to every service, act like everything's going well at home, right? If a decision hasn't happened in your heart, it doesn't matter. Amen? If you haven't put your faith and trust in Christ in your heart, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter what everybody thinks about you. I heard a message today that said the defining attribute of God is holiness. And it's true. Because what's unique about the love of God is his holiness. People always say God is love, right? Right? But what is special about the love of God is holiness. No smell, no stink. He demands perfection, right? The only thing that can get away the stink in you. The Bible says your righteousness is as filthy rags. The only thing that can get the smell away from you is the holiness of God. Amen? And it takes humility to accept the holiness of God to accept what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross of Calvary. When he died on the cross, he said, all of your sins, put it on me. You cannot work your way to heaven. And you know what? After you get saved, you can't live the Christian life by yourself. Amen? You need to choose hope over sin. Over sin. You know what will push you away from God is sin. Right? Everybody knows, oh, I used to be, oh, if you say I used to be alcoholic, which I kind of used to be. I, I, no, I used to be alcoholic, right? I'm not joking. I used to be, actually. Right? Every, if, if, if you say that, right, every, everyone can see the effects of that. When you drink, everyone can see the effects of that. When you do certain things, everyone can see the effects of that. You know, God delivered me from that. God delivered me from, every, from, from a lot of the outward things, right? But what about the stuff that you do alone. What about the stuff you do alone? Nobody sees. Nobody sees. God sees that. And he can deliver you from that. 
There is hope. That's how you live the Christian life. Putting your faith and trust. Confessing your sins. Never give up on sin. Never give up and say, oh, I'm going to struggle with this for the rest of my life. No. God can deliver you. And when he delivers you, you will have freedom. If you will go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verse 14 to 16. I'm not going to take that much more time. Romans chapter 6. Verse 14 to 16. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. I want to tell you what. Imagine someone spraying all that perfume, right? Going to work hard and still smelling funky. Because what's going to smell when you got cologne Cologne and body odor mixed together. It almost smells worse, doesn't it? <laughs> right. The Bible says, Sin shall not have dominion of, over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, he servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Let me tell you what. When you are free from sin, when God delivers you from a sin, when God delivers you from a sin, there's, then you can see the freedom. You can see the joy, Right? You can see, you can see, why did I, why did I want to do this? Sometimes we think, oh, I'm, I'm sacrificing this for God. No, you're not. If you let that go, then you will have joy. Then you will have peace. Right? Take my word for it. If you happen to let that go, then you will have peace, and you will have joy, and you will have freedom. Take God's word for it. Amen? Take God's word for it. Amen. Choose hope over fear. If you would turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I want to ask today, what is an expected end? We need to choose hope over fear. Hope over fear. You know what? Sometimes... For some reason, maybe you don't, you're in a hurry and you don't put, up, put on enough deodorant. Or have you, I've, I've done this, I've walked out of the house with no deodorant on. How timid are you? When you walk up to somebody, you don't want to stand too close because you know you stink. <laughs> and then you can go in the bathroom and you can get some of the soap in the bathroom and try to put it in your armpits and it doesn't work. I don't know if you have any other tricks, but teach me. I haven't done it in a while, but I used to in high school a lot. Forget to put on deodorant because, you know, when you're a kid, you don't need it. And then there's that line where you need it, and if you don't get it just right, you don't, you, you, you don't know you do yet. Until people tell you, you stink. You stink. Right? So, choose hope over fear. You know, when I was getting my uh, master's in education, my professor always says, begin with the end in mind. Do everything with the end in mind. And for most of us, that's very easy to understand. In most issues, that's very easy for us to understand. But there is an end that we don't think about, and that end is death, right? But God says, in that last moment, when we are breathing our last breath, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long, it can be a, when you think about it, it scares us. It scares us. When I was in Nigeria, I had cerebral malaria one time. 
And uh, what I remember was I was, I was kind of groggy, and then I just don't remember anything. And I always think, if that's how we die, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. And, uh, but I always say, I hope my real death happens like that. But there's a lot of fear when we think about our death. But God says that we can overcome that fear. We can overcome that fear. The same way we get saved is if we live our lives the same way that we got saved. If we live lives filled with faith and lives filled with hope, placing our total dependence on Christ, right? Yes. Yielding our all, all of our direction to what he wants us to do, right? Then, when you look to that moment when you die, you will no longer have fear. You will have peace. You will have a peace that passeth all understanding. Because you will realize that nothing is in our control. Don't even try. No, nothing is in your control. Right? The fact that you stink or not is not in your control. Amen? It's in God's hands. Your life is in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands. We should yield our whole life to God. Let him direct us. Amen? That's what we do in Nigeria. We just like to tell people about what Jesus Christ did for us. The same way I try to tell my friend that went to the supermarket with me, that, hey, that cologne is not going to do you no good. Not without this. Not without this. You take that knowledge for granted. There's a lot of young people here today growing up in Christian homes, right? You know about Christ. You are around people that have the grace of God, that have trusted in Christ, that have experienced the mercy of God. You're going to go out in the world and they're going to make the stink look good. But well, you know what? It stinks. It stinks. And you don't want to find out too late that you just stink too. Like, you've, you've, you've hung around the stink. Right? You, when you hang around sin, and if, if you're saved, you're not going to be happy. You're going to smell it all the time. You're going to smell it. You know, until a lot of a lot of. People here, in, people here in America are very sensitive to smells. Very sensitive to all kinds of smells. Because you've experienced not smelling, not smelling things. Right? You've experienced that. Once you know about deodorant, you're going to smell. You're going to smell things. Right? You're going to smell it. Before 1888, nobody probably knew what be, be, body odor was, right? Because everybody, everybody smelled, right? Think of all the kings and queens, everyone around the world, they all stunk. <laughs> and nobody knew it. Before I go, we're out of time. I, this is a short challenge to each and every one of us. Let's tell the world why we don't stink. Amen? Amen. God help us. have our heads bowed for just a moment tonight. You know, there were times through that message that we chuckled because we knew how true what he was saying is. And the fact of the matter is this, sin stinks in the nostrils of God, it always has. And Jesus died to save you from that. Now, if you've not been born again, you need to trust him. You need to be saved. He's the only one that can deal with that problem in your life. And I want to say this, if the Lord has saved you, then we need to be real careful that we don't let ourselves start to stink the way we did before we got saved. 
the Lord saved you to deliver you from that. Not for you to be content to stay in it, to look like, to sound like, to act like, to smell like the world. It's unbecoming of the child of God. And Jesus suffered too much for you and I to stay in that. And as he said at the end tonight, there was a time when folks didn't realize just what that situation was. And all around the world today, there are people, and there are people in this community that quite honestly, spiritually speaking, just do not know know how bad they stink. They do not know that without Jesus Christ, everyone does. And they need someone this week to tell them. So if you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ as Savior, don't leave here with the spiritual stink of sin on you that you cannot get rid of yourself. Don't try to cover it up. Don't try to put something else on it. Don't try to deal with it some other way. Don't try to work your way through it. Don't try to convince yourself that it's not real. You just need to go to Jesus today and He can take care of that for you. If you're here tonight and you have been saved, but the Lord's dealing with you about some smelly things that you're letting get back in your life again, I want to encourage you to come to an old-fashioned altar tonight and get that right before the Lord this evening. Let him, let him deliver you from that besetting sin that Brother Olavi mentioned earlier tonight. And if God has spoken to your heart tonight about making sure that those around you, let's not let a world, a lost world around us go to hell without knowing that there's a smell that they need to deal with. Without, not, without knowing that they don't have Jesus and just how bad that really is. A lot of practical truth in what our brother shared with us tonight. I sure hope you don't miss it. Let's stand together right now. And if God's spoken to your heart this evening about uh, about sharing the good news with others, about making sure that you stay out of that stuff that Jesus died to deliver you from, you let him have his way this evening. If you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ as Savior, come on this evening. Come ahead. We'll, We'll take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure that you're saved. You can get it settled right here tonight. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do this just in case. Brother Brandon, I want you to come right here to this front pew. If if you're not sure you're saved tonight and you need to get it settled, you come and see Brother Brandon right now. And either he or someone else that he uh, gets for you will show you and help you get that settled here tonight. I hope you'll come. God's spoken to your heart, Christian, this evening. What a practical, practical message for us tonight. I mean, it, it couldn't be any plainer than our brother put it this evening. We need to do something about it. We need, to, we, need to get, we need to get out of that stuff that Jesus came to get us out of. And we need to take a, a message to a lost and dying world this week so that they would not go out into eternity just simply not knowing. I believe if a man goes to hell from our town, he ought to have to trip over the cross of Jesus Christ to do it. We ought to get the gospel to him and make it so plain that he'll have to willfully reject Jesus Christ. Let's not let one go to hell from Sumter, South Carolina without us telling them. And let's take very real our responsibility to get the gospel to all the world, not just here. Brother Chris is going to sing verse of invitation song. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. If God's speaking to your heart tonight, I hope you'll come. You let him have his way. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others Thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble Let me at a throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneel-
Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do Sometimes I'll find myself ministering to people that are very frustrated and they're, 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 they're frustrated with themselves and they, they've gotten a very low opinion of themselves and they say things like, well, I just mess everything up and I just keep messing everything up and I'm just, I'm just, I just feel worthless. I feel like I mess everything up and, and uh, you know, I want to say to them, hey, look, it's just like deodorant. Everybody needs it. Everybody's messed up. Without Jesus, none of us have any hope. It's not time to just throw up your hands and say, I quit or I'm worthless or do something drastic. Just go to Jesus and let him know that you know how much you need him today. And he is able and he will meet your need. Wasn't that a good, wasn't that good tonight? A blessing and practical? I know we laughed along with him and everything, but boy, it, it really opened the door to some good truth that needed to settle into our hearts, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was very good. Now, I will have to tell you this. I have, uh, I've got uh, some preacher friends that I communicate with regularly, and a lot of times we'll be getting close to Sunday, and one of us, I've done it before, and uh, I've brought a couple of sermon titles in here like this, and We'll tell each other, you know, hey, I'm preaching on this subject in this passage, and here's the main points I'm covering, but I'm struggling with a good title. You guys give me a good title for this sermon. And, and brother, I have got to send this one to my friends and say, hey, guys, give me, the, give me your best title for this message, because I know they'd come up with some good ones. Tom Jordan's got a ringer for it, brother Brother Brandon, I guarantee you. Uh, but uh, praise the Lord, what a practical message tonight. We sure needed to hear that, and I hope that you'll take something from it, and I hope that, uh, I hope that it'll stick with you this week and that we'll put it into action this week. Remember, uh, hey, without, without Jesus, there's nothing but sin, and sin always stinks, amen? We need Jesus, and there are others around us that need Jesus, and let's not soon forget what we've heard tonight. Brother Obalabi, in a moment, as we, uh, when Brother Brandon comes to pray, and Brother Brandon, if you'll come onto the platform, I'm going to let you walk back with me, and we're going to be in the foyer out there, uh, and uh, I hope that you will pray for Brother Obalabi and let him know that you will. Uh, now, if you, uh, I know I was talking to him before the service. His prayer cards have been ordered, but they've not come in yet, and he's as frustrated about that as anybody. He'd like to have them. But you don't need one. Open your missions directory. Find the letter O and they will be there. There will be a picture and there will be a reminder of their field and you pray for them all the time. If you did not get one at missions conference or bless your heart, if you lost it. And you don't have to tell. Because I believe there are still a few on the table back there if we haven't collected them. I saw some there the other day. If they're there, you can get one tonight. But our whole missions family is in there. And you pray for them. Find them there and pray for them on a regular basis. And ask the Lord to continue to bless them. Now don't lie to him tonight. But if you will pray for them. And if you do pray for them already, they would love to hear that. It will encourage their heart to know that you are standing with them in prayer uh, as uh, as they go back to Nigeria. And I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do in that church plan as they get their building done and, uh, and to see God move forward there. Amen? Amen? God bless you, my brother. So good to have you in. And we'll be dismissed in prayer. Brother Brandon, if you'll come and lead us now. Are you practicing with the teens tonight? After this, I figured you're probably going to mention that anyway. Uh, but parents of teens, be mindful of that. And he'll, he'll say something about it now because I jumped the gun and got in his stuff. So. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, parents, we will, teenagers, we will meet right over here by the piano, about 15, 20 minutes. Parents, we won't be long uh, to practice the song that we're going to sing for the uh, teen service in a couple weeks. So let's uh, close together in a word of prayer tonight. 
Lord, we do thank you for a great day in your house. Uh, Lord, thank you for uh, wonderful messages that we've heard today, Lord, and I uh, pray that they would, uh, we wouldn't just be hearers of the uh, word, but doers uh, as well. We thank you for a great week of ministry. Uh, God, the two souls you saved in jail ministry on Friday night and the two souls that were saved yesterday at bus ministry, we praise you for that, uh, Lord, and we thank you for your great grace in our lives. Uh, again, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, bless in the days ahead. Uh, Lord, I pray that we'd be reminded uh, from the powerful message that we've heard tonight to continue to, uh, to share the news to those who may not know, to those who may not have heard. Uh, it's hard for us to fathom uh, millions of people who have never heard the name Jesus, who have never heard the gospel message. And how can they hear except uh, somebody tell them? Lord, help us to uh, continue to do our part to reach our community here and the world beyond through our missions, giving, and prayer as well. Uh, Lord, and we'll rejoice and we'll thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.